Hi, my name is Deacon Jim, and this is St. Bernadette in South Los Angeles. Today is Friday, December 30th, and we celebrate the feast day of the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And let us begin, as we always begin, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we begin our celebration, let us praise our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you came to seek out those who were lost. Lord, have mercy. You came to give your life for the sake of all. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather into one family your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O oh God, who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so, in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us come together as we break open the scripture. A reading from the book of Sirach. God sets a father in honor over his children. A mother's authority he confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. He stores up riches who reveres his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children, and when he prays, he is heard. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fails, be considerate of him. Revile him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten, firmly planted against the debt of your sins, a house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is... Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home, your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. A reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Hannah conceived, and at the end of her term bore a son, whom she called Samuel. Since she had asked the Lord for him, the next time her husband, Elkhaman, was going up with the rest of his household, to offer the customary sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vows, Hannah did not go, explaining to her husband, once the child is weaned, I will take him to appear before the Lord and to remain there forever. I will offer him as a perpetual Nazarite. Once Samuel was weaned, Hannah brought him up with her along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour and a skin of wine, and presented him at the temple of the Lord in Shiloh. After the boy's father had sacrificed the young bull, 
Hannah, his mother, approached Eli and said, Pardon, my Lord, as you live, my Lord. I am the woman who stood here near you, praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord granted my request. Now I, in turn, give him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be dedicated to the Lord. And Hannah left Samuel there. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is, Blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh Cry out for the living God. Blessed are they who dwell in the house of the Lord. Happy they who dwell in your house. Continually they praise you. Happy the men whose strength you are. Their hearts are set upon the pilgrimage. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. O Lord of hosts, hear our prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. O God, behold our shield, and look upon the face of your anointed. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. And the Lord be with you, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Magi had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you. Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. Joseph rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. He stayed there until the death of Herod that what the Lord had said through the prophet might be fulfilled. Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod had died, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Rise, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the child's life are dead. He rose, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go back there. And because he had been warned in a dream, he departed for the region of Galilee. He went and dwelt in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He shall be called a Nazarene. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we have a lot of optional readings today for this, this particular uh, holy day. Um, today we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family and the sanctity of family life. We talk about the Feast of the Holy Family, but we're really talking about the sanctity of family life, which in many ways, is under attack right now. Um, look to the Holy Family, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, for the best model of family life. All three were obedient and loyal to one another, out of reverence to the Father. They each exemplified the guidance in today's Gospel acclamation from Colossians 3. Let the peace of Christ control your hearts. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. In today's gospel, we also can see Joseph's willingness to heed guidance from the Holy Spirit, to do whatever it took to preserve his family. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, telling him, telling him to take Jesus and Mary back to Israel since Herod was dead. Attuned to God and the Holy Spirit, Joseph instead took his family to Nazareth, 
after finding out that Herod's son was still ruling over Judea, an equally evil man. Parents all over the world continue to flee from dangerous conditions. We hear about it in the news every day where one racial or religious group is persecuting another, where families are running from one end of a country to another region, whatever, trying to find safeties. Um, they, parents all over the world continue to flee from these conditions and try to get their families to safe places to give their children a better life. How many people brought their families to the United States, you know, at the turn of two centuries ago that migrated from Europe to find a better life? Like the Holy Family, they became refugees to save their families. In light of today's feast day, let us reflect on another passage, Leviticus 19.34. You shall treat the alien who resides with you no differently than the natives born among you. You shall love the alien as yourself, for you too were once aliens in the land of Egypt. I, the Lord, am your God. How can we do a better job of protecting our families and all families throughout the world? I married into an immigrant family. Uh, my wife is half Lithuanian, half Italian. Her father's family came from Italy, obviously, Abruzzese, and her mother's family came from Lithuania. They were coal miners back in Pennsylvania when I grew up. Now, people always referred to us as founder families because my family's been in the country since the 1700s. And one day, this rather persnickety, angry, tough, mean person started making comments to me about why would I marry an immigrant, an immigrant woman. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? He said, well, the family's immigrated here, what, one or two uh, generations ago? I said, yeah, so? I said, I'm from an immigrant family. And he goes, no, you're not. You're a founder family. Your family immigrated here in the 1700s. I said, well, you said the key word. They came here. They immigrated here in the 1700s. They were fleeing persecution in, in Ireland because of their religious uh, affiliations. And they came here for a better life. I said, so what difference does it make if it's 1700 or 1900 or 2000? And he was really upset by that because he was trying to hold me up and say I should have married this woman. And in fact, we all came from somewhere, as my grandfather used to say. So my brothers and sisters, as we celebrate this Feast of the Holy Family, we're pointed to the fact that we're all of that same family. We're all descendants of God. Yet, we all came from somewhere, my brothers and sisters. Maybe it was Lithuania. Maybe it was Italy. Maybe it was Ireland. Maybe it was England or Scotland. You know, maybe it was from another country, Africa, South Africa, Asia. We all came from somewhere. But my brothers and sisters, we all, we all ultimately came from God. And so, therefore, we're all related. Amen. We now turn to our God with the needs and prayers of our hearts. For our Pope and all who lead the Church, that the season of Advent and Christmas will inspire your, their leadership and grant them continued strength and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from mental illness, that their lives will find and experience the light of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those among us who struggle with difficult and impossible situations, that this season will bring peace and joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, and comfort the dying, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially the unborn and the victims of COVID-19, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers we hold in the silence of our own hearts,
for these prayers, those entered into our prayer and petition book, that they may be received and answered by our God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and gracious God, we come before you as your children in need of your love and support. We ask you to hear and answer these prayers, which we make in the name of Jesus, who is our Lord forever and ever. Amen. And let us come together and pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, and deliver us from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that, after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And the Lord be with you, and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Happy New Year, I guess I should say. We're at the 31st today, Feast of the Holy Family. And so may I wish you a very happy New Year. And we'll see you back here tomorrow for Liturgy of the Word. Amen. Amen.